Hi, I'm Erin Lundy. And I'm Madeline Walden, and this is Aquarium, Aquarium of the Pod Pacific. A podcast brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, Southern California's largest aquarium. Join us as we learn alongside the experts in animal care, conservation, and more. Welcome back to Aquarium of the Pod Pacific. Woo-hoo! We made it to season two. If you can't tell, that is a large crowd of people <laughs> cheering in the background. <laughs> live studio um, audience today. Yeah, totally live. Totally not just recording this in an empty studio <clears throat> with just us two. No. Uh, speaking of, I'm Erin Lundy. I'm the conservation coordinator for Mammals and Birds. And I'm Madeline Walden, the aquarium's digital content and community manager. What have we been up to since season one launched? A lot. Our a jobs. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot going on at our jobs. Yeah, you've been up to a lot. A lot, a lot. We've had... A lot of different conservation projects that mm-hmm. we've been working on. We've had our mountain yellow-legged frogs continuing to grow and be awesome here, mm-hmm. working on some new habitats and stuff for some of our animals. So we have a lot of exciting things happening this summer. But um, for now, we just wanted to make sure season two gets brought to your ears. Yeah, I know it's been a minute. And we can hear a little bit more about our animals, which I'm so excited about. I miss those stories. I know. <laughs> it's so absence. fun. So Tricking our coworkers into talking about <laughs> the, hey, whatever how works. cool their jobs are. I think it works great. I think so, too. It's really fun. Today, we want to talk about one of the animals that is in actually quite a few exhibits Mm -hmm. at the aquarium. Um, They are rays, and rays are pretty cool animals that are pretty closely related to sharks, Mm -hmm. which I don't think a lot of people know. They are a cartilaginous fish, which is how I am often described as well. (laughs) I have heard that about you. I have heard that. (laughs) It's been Um, going around. Yeah. There's a rumor about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is a really cool episode. I... It's surprising and not surprising that rays get a ton of love on social media. We talk a little bit about it in the episode, but they're, they're so cute. up there with the sea otters and the mammals um, here at the aquarium and even over sharks sometimes. <gasps> yeah. Even though they're, they're cousins. They're cousins. They're the popular cousin. They're the flat sharks. <laughs> they're just Pancake flat sharks. sharks. So mm-hmm. therefore sharks are still popular because they're just flat sharks. Exactly. Today we're going to be talking to Sarah Navarez, who is one of our aquarists who helps to take care of our rays. And she's going to tell us all about what it looks like to take care of the flattest sharks of all. (laughs) She's so knowledgeable. I really love this episode. I know I learned a lot. And I know you are too. Yeah, I think it's a really great episode and I'm excited um, for everyone to hear And I'm excited to be back with you. I I am excited to be back. It has been so long Mm -hmm. that this intro, we're like, are we good? Do we... (laughs) Do we know how to do this? Do we remember this? Do we know how to talk? I think but then we put the headphones on and we're like, oh, yeah, we That's know true. how to talk. We can really hear ourselves. We're big yappers. It's very meta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is meta yapping that's happening right now. <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, um, let's get into our episode. So today on our podcast, we have Sarah Navarez, who works with our rays. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hello. I'm great. What is your job title here at the aquarium? I am an Aquarist One here at the aquarium, and I've been paid staff for about two years, but um, I was a volunteer diver before that for four years. Ooh, I didn't think I knew that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So our dive program does have volunteers, which is awesome. And what level of dive certification do you need to be a dive volunteer here? You have to be at least rescue certified. So that's, I think, the third level of certification, and you have to have 50 logged ocean dives oh wow which is quite a quite a lot lot. Mm -hmm. yeah but we do do a lot here we we're doing feedings we're doing presentations so you got to be kind of moving the whole time um, and be a good experienced diver but it's ultimately what got me my job here so it's true all I heard was Sarah's like an amazing diver (laughs) so basically I'm the best diver you've ever seen yeah (laughs) so did you start working with or around some of our rays when you were a volunteer diver the only thing I can remember is sometimes the volunteer divers will go into the ray pool exhibit and clean. Mm. And so I remember, this was probably back in 2017, getting in in a wetsuit and like doing the stingray shuffle as they call mm. it and just uh, walking around and being careful and just scrubbing the walls and the rocks. So the stingray shuffle is not a term I had ever heard until I moved to California. Really? Oh, right. And, yeah. And people are now just like, everyone knows the stingray shuffle. So for listeners who might not be familiar, what exactly is the shuffle? So it's not a cool dance I that wish. you do for no reason. I think we should make it a cool dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so beaches in California here are super populated with little round rays and it can be dangerous. So you basically, instead of walking normally on the sand, you shuffle your feet so that whatever rays are in the sand will feel those vibrations and take off and be away from you and you don't step on anybody oh, that I would know. be so sad I know. for everyone <laughs> the human being stung yeah. and the ray and the ray that's like ouch <laughs> what has been your favorite part of your job so far 
Um, so far, I recently got checked out to be a field diver. So Ooh. yes, um, I am part of the team that will go out and collect animals or go do surveys out um, in the open ocean for our research projects, such as our abalone um, project that we're doing um, with a bunch of different partners. So that's been really fun to get out there and feel like a real scientist. That's so so cool. you yeah. to count abalone? Um, sometimes we do, we'll run what, what's called transects, which looks like a big measuring tape underwater and you run it a certain direction, certain location, and you're counting things on each side mm-hmm. or you're surveying or doing things like that. Yeah. On our last dive, we released a bunch of baby white abalone, which yeah. was so cool to see. It's exciting. Yeah. I think we're going to talk about abalone in a future episode and sort yes. of what our participation looks like. So this that's... is your preview. Oh, yeah. this is a little <laughs> yeah. sneak, just a sneak peek of abalone. <laughs> Abalones exist. Yeah. It's a little... <laughs> <laughs> abalone teaser for everyone <laughs> <Yeah>. out there. <laughs> well, so it sounds like you did get your start sort of in our dive area, but how did you start mm-hmm. working specifically with rays? Did you have any specific experience that led you to that? It's kind of funny. When I started, I remember my first day I was being shown around by my supervisor and she was basically telling me what exhibits I was going to have because mm-hmm. in my position, I'm in charge of four to five exhibits. And we walked up to the ray pool and she was like, this is yours. <laughs> so I just took it over. I mean, I've been around like I said before, I've been around the rays and stuff and I know um, about their anatomy. I have my degree in marine biology, mm-hmm. so I have like very intro ray knowledge. But that's pretty much how I got the ray mm-hmm. pool. <laughs> it was yeah. just given to me and I've had it the whole time I've been here and I've, I've left it. It's it's super cool. There. Um, I think one of my favorite things about working in husbandry and that sort of has been a universal experience for everyone is, you know, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, you must have loved frogs getting into this. And I'm just like, no, someone one day just was like, hey, we need help. You seem like you like plants and probably animals. Like, do you want to help with this? And of course I did. You know, like I love learning new things, but mm-hmm. there was no initial passion for amphibians. And now years later, it's like such an it's ingrained part. <laughs> it's my whole person. I, I have a frog, a frog tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like everything. <laughs> How did this happen all of a sudden? And, you know, like the Mountain Yellow-Legged Frog Project is so much a part of what I do here. But if you had asked me five years ago, oh, how interested are you in frogs? I would have said not at all. <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. Know. They're cute. I yeah. like them, but I know nothing about them. And I think that's almost a misconception because, like, how can you possibly come into this field with the level of expertise that you need to learn, like, to know about a ray? You know, it's yeah. not a pet animal. It's not an animal you could have kept. But, you know, one day you were assigned ray pool and all of these rays are your <laughs> responsibility. Mm-hmm. And then the passion sort of follows, which I think is cool. But it must, what's that learning curve like <laughs> for you? It's very intimidating. <laughs> well, and a lot of things too, you can only learn about these animals when you're working with them. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. So uh, we just finished up welfare assessments for our rays. Every year we weigh all them and we measure them and we do a visual inspection. Um, and so the first time we did that, we weighed all of them on mm-hmm. a big scale. It's so we weird. Used, I think we used the otter scale for the first time. It's so weird. Yeah. Like, it's big, and you don't realize how heavy they are. Yeah. Until Ooh, how heavy are they? Um, I think our heaviest one is 27 kilograms. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like a 60-pound Big ray. girl. Yeah. Who is that? I think that's Stubby. Stubby. But I, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I like I didn't know how much a weight a ray weighed. Ooh, that's hard to say. I, d- I didn't know how much a ray, ray weighed yeah. <laughs> until you know I'm taking it out of the water. Yeah. So and like, whoa. Yeah. The longer I'm with the tank and with the animals, the more I learn about them. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's just that's just how it is. So much of it is such like niche knowledge too. Of like, right. oh, for this ray, the best way to carry this animal yeah. is, the, and you're like, how would I have ever come in with that information? <laughs> yeah. But I think it's really cool, and I love that people sort of get assignments, and then part of the assignments essentially learn about the animals and do everything you can to provide the best possible care Mm -hmm. and of course we have guidance and we have like husbandry care manuals Mm -hmm. and things like that but so much of it is like on the job learning yeah and i think that's really cool yeah but since you know so much about rays we are going to be asking Mm -hmm. you lots of questions (laughs) since i'm the expert on rays yeah (laughs) um so who are our current rays like what species do you take care of of our stingrays so in ray touchable we have the bat rays are the main attraction Mm -hmm. um we have six of them They all have names, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, We have three little round rays. And so those are the ones that you're, you might find on the beaches here in Southern California. They're little and round. They're they're so, that's, yes, they're little round rays. They're, um, They're I don't know, maybe four or five inches across. And they're the brown colors that you see. They're like brown, light brown. And they camouflage really well on the sand. Um, And then we have a shovel nose guitar fish in ray pool as well. It's kind of the one that's like, doesn't look like a typical ray. It looks, looks like, like a, a shovel nose guitar fish. Like if, you're, <laughs> if you're, you like, just that's draw really that, if you had to yeah. name it, yeah, just draw, draw what, what you think that is. <laughs> and that's, that's what, probably what it yeah, is. Yeah, you're so yeah. right. Yeah. Is it considered a ray? 
I think so. Okay. Yeah. There's some confusing, like rays and sharks and, and the terminology are all yeah. related. Yes. yes, skate is a whole other thing. So, <laughs> stay um, tuned for the skate stay episode. Stay tuned for the skate episode, another preview. Um, and then, okay, shovel nose guitar fish, weirdo. And then two sturgeon, which are the big fish in there. We get asked a lot of questions yes, about the everyone sturgeon. Everyone loves cool. the sturgeon. They are cool. Mm-hmm. Like They're very cool fish. Mm-hmm. How um, old are our sturgeons? Oof. Uh, the big boy or girl? I don't know, actually. The big old sturgeon. The big sturgeon is <laughs> maybe around 10 or 12. Oh, wow. Okay. I think that goes off of when we got them and everything. Um, the smaller one, she's a little female, and probably four or five. Okay. But again, that's a very, very slow. rough estimate. Okay. <laughs> they grow slow and, and yeah. Um, but the bat rays in Raypool have names. And all the names are based off what their tail looks like because oh. there's no other way to name them really. <laughs> yeah, how else would you um, tell them apart? How else would you tell them apart? Um, so we have S, whose tail shaped like an S. Mm. We have Curl, who has a little curl at the end oh. of her tail. Tiny is the smallest one. Oh. Um, clean is <laughs> when we added... As opposed to everyone else. As opposed else. to everyone else. Um, so Unrapeful, they're kind of... They're big animals. They can be a little rough with each other. Um, so sometimes they'll have little scratches on them. Mm. Um, and I think when Clean was added, she was like one of the newer ones with no scratches. Oh, so pristine. I think she was pristine and yeah. clean. Clear um, skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Stubby, which we mentioned before, and Stubby has the shortest tail. And then mm. we have Kink, who has a little kink at the end of her tail. Oh. Okay. So yeah. you can't, like, if you looked at the majority <clears throat> of their body, it would be hard to tell them apart. Yes. But the tail is very <laughs> distinct. Tail the tail, if there's no tail, then you need help because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way you're going to tell their names. But That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, then it would be none. That would be their name. Aww. Yeah, none. None. <laughs> none tail. That's none sad. Nun. I know. <laughs> Poor none. Poor none. Well, we don't have a none. We don't there. have a none. No. no, no, no. Do the <clears throat> round rays have names? No. Wow. <laughs> because they all look the same. <laughs> the little pause before. Uh, no. no. <laughs> they just don't. That's well, fine. I was thinking of a way that I could maybe kind of tell them apart, but no. No, mm-hmm. they because don't. Because they're all similar size, too. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're, I mean, they're like exactly sand colored. You're like, I could see how <clears throat> someone would step on that. And That's why the stingray shuffle is very important. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. The bat rays, if you can't see that, you... <laughs> then you need help again. Because <laughs> they're so they're big. like four feet across. Yeah. <laughs> like, totally different color than the sand. <laughs> yeah. But I understand when I look at the round rays, why that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of their tails, are there stingers on their tail? So we've referred to it as a barb. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's called stingray. <clears throat> I know it's called a stingray, but um, the barb is actually at the base of the tail. So they should be called barb rays. So barb rays. <laughs> I'm changing their name to barb rays. <laughs> barb rays. <laughs> but the barb is at the base of their tail. So if you look at the body and just where the tail starts to come off the body, you'll see a little barb. Um, a lot of the rays in Raypool are pretty old. They're around 20, 20 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, some of them are charter animals. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been with the aquarium since we opened. Um, so over time, that barb, <clears throat> we trim it so that it can't hurt people. So some of the rays in Raypool actually don't even have their barb anymore. Mm. Um, sometimes if we trim it down or sometimes it'll grow crooked, so we have to remove the barb mm, just so it doesn't hurt the animal anymore. So a good majority of them, I think four or five of them don't even have barbs. So just like a smooth little part on their tail. Mm-hmm. But we always keep it clipped so that no one gets... I've barbed. heard it um, described <clears throat> as kind of like a fingernail kind of yeah. clipping it back. So does it does it hurt the animal or does it cause any other issues? No, um, in a you know habitat where it doesn't have to defend itself. I'm assuming right, does, not necessary. Um, it's kind of like a dog's nail. You know how you can't mm. cut too far, mm-hmm. otherwise you'll get mm. the quick. Mm-hmm. Um, so we cut just kind of at the end where it's pointy. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't bleed or anything. It doesn't hurt the animal. And it, you're just cutting off the sharp part of mm-hmm. the nail or the a sharp manicure. part of the barb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A manicure, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. And yeah, they if they don't have to use them in the ray, in the ray pool, they're, they're fine without it. Yeah. It's for safety. What does it feel like if you get stung? If Oh, um, it depends on the species. Okay. Um, so if we're thinking of more common ways to get stung out here with the little round rays, mm-hmm. um, if you get barbed, I guess, Barbed, stung, <laughs> quilled. I don't know. I've been barbed. If you get, if you, yeah. if you get hurt by a ray, <laughs> by a little round ray, um, I know if you pour hot water over it, it's just it's irritating and it hurts, but it's not like gonna die mm-hmm. or anything. Yeah, not super um, I'm assuming a bat ray because it is a bigger animal will probably be more painful. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and again, the treatment for that is probably hot water until you can go to the hospital if you need yeah. to. Can you go to the oh. hospital for I it? I don't know. If oh. bat rays worse. That's true, and they're huge. And they're huge. <laughs> bat rays in the wild can get up to 70, 80 pounds, I think. Oh, wow. Ours are, ours are 
50, 60 probably. Mm-hmm. But they can get big and they can get, I think, six feet in wingspan, which is my height. Oh, I'm a very tall it. person. <laughs> so Everyone, Sarah is six feet tall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just imagine so, and a ray. basically Ray's about Ray's size. <laughs> oh, that's why you're in charge of them. Yeah. yeah. You can relate oh, to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they chose. Your supervisor was like, you seem exactly like these bad rays. Let's put you in charge of them. Yeah. So have you ever been stung by a ray in general? I have not. Ever in your ever life? Ever in, in my life. In all 50 in plus all ocean my, dives you've done? In all my 5,000 million dives I've done? Never been stung? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, bat rays are usually, they're not ones, or rays in general are not animals to go and attack you. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much only if, like we said, if you're stepped on or if you're kind of in their area or you're reaching down and you accidentally are near them, then they will whip their tail around and get you with the barb. Mm, but fair. they're not aggressive animals. They're so, like, they're such interesting animals mm-hmm. because, like, to think that this thing is related to a shark and, like, I hear people describe them as, like, a sea pancake or, you know, like, they're <laughs> so flat. <laughs> they look so yeah. different than mm-hmm. a shark. What are some of the similarities or characteristics that they have in common with uh, other elasmobranchs? Like, what do you see across that family? So, yes, they related to sharks. Um, they, both sharks and rays have their skeleton is not made out of bone. It's actually made out of cartilage. Mm. So it makes them very smooth in the water. It makes them very flexible and easy to fit into maybe smaller spaces. But they're a lot more aerodynamic that way. Mm. Or water dynamic. <laughs> water not dynamic. air. I'm going to call everything water dynamic. <laughs> water dynamic. Um, I love that. So that's one of the main things that sets or that, that sharks and rays have in common. Scott has a question. Everybody welcome Scott to the podcast. Yeah. Welcome, really. Scott. Scott. <laughs> And a ray nerd. Hello, and a everybody. rock nerd. And a shark tooth <laughs> yeah. nerd. Uh, sharks, I know if you turn them over, they go into the uh, tonic immobility, but do rays do the same? I, th- I believe some species do. I honestly have never flipped one of the bat rays over <laughs> because I would get slapped in the face. <laughs> um, By the ray and, or? Uh, <laughs> Someone walking first, by. First so. by someone being like, what are you doing? And then by a ray. Uh, okay, double wing. Yeah, Team they're, slaps. they're very yeah, strong. Uh, like I mentioned, when we do the assessments and we have to handle them and mm-hmm. weigh them and all that, it takes a couple people. So um, that's an excellent question. Um, but I believe some do, yes. It's funny because sometimes I'll walk over by the ray pool and they'll just like slap the oh water so hard that they cause like this tidal wave yes. outside of the ray pool. So I can't even imagine that like on your body. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, like, just, yeah, in the morning, their kind of routine is in the mornings, they're very splashy. Mm-hmm. They will be up against the wall. We think it, they've just always done that. They, it's usually in the morning when I feed them. Yeah, so they're, they're ready. like, I want food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the afternoon, they're worn out and they're sleeping <laughs> and I'm napping exhausted. and exhausted. <laughs> Um, so yeah, sometimes in the morning it just sounds like yeah. someone is. Oh, I have mistakenly sat there like waiting for to go into pinnipeds or something, splash zone. and just fully gotten splashed. Like, yeah, this is my fault. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the good morning wake up. Yeah, it's uh, it was just refreshing. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to help just you walk around with wet bit. pants the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty common for you guys, I'm sure. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's wet pants. Day. That's normal. just. Okay. I'm pretty sure I've seen Sarah in fully inside of the ray pool more than anyone else I've ever seen in the ray pool. Because you have to like go with into regular it pants or yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> just in I there. guess in a wetsuit typically, but I you not in uniform. Have either. you ever fallen in? <laughs> no. Really? I have and not. And you won't. And I won't. And she won't. Says who? I'm just manifesting that for her. Well, okay. It doesn't count if... Okay. So yes. Does it, count? <laughs> so it, does. it counts. When I go in the exhibit, I'll be either in a wetsuit mm-hmm. or in like fishing waders that come up to... I don't know, my stomach. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was doing something and I slipped. That counts. Sorry. Okay, that counts. <laughs> um, and some of the water got into the no! waters. Yeah, worse. it wasn't the whole thing. But so technically, yes, enough. I have fallen while I was inside the rape pool. And you got water in your pants. I got water in my pants and my water pants are all wet. Pants, we have to get in, in the waders to clean the pinniped windows, the seals and sea lion window. Mm-hmm. And there was the one, worst thing is I found out there was a hole in the butt of the waders because Parker swam by and, <laughs> splashed oh, and I just got so much water down oh, the back of my pants. I was like, ah, horrible. thanks, Parker. <laughs> I had that happen when um, I was working on TROP up in the exhibit because the audio box, you actually have to go down those oh. steps. And I leaned down too far to pick up something and water just filled the waders. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I was like, like, oh no. I live in here now. Yeah, that was my day. Yeah. All of your clothes are wet. Oh, it's yeah. not like a wet sock or anything. No. It's no, like no, your it's whole body. Everything. <laughs> You're just full of water. You're basically in like a little I'm an pool. exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the pool. Um, cool. Well, in ter- so you talked a little bit about how some of our bat rays are 25 plus years old have been at the aquarium since we opened how long do rays live are there very long-lived species is it species dependent it's species dependent um bigger 
way bigger species, like species of manta ray, I'm assuming live way longer, but bat ray lifespan is about 25 years. Um, in captivity, they probably live longer, which mm-hmm. is why the ones that we've had for so long are still kicking and splashing everybody. <laughs> still splashing. Um, but they are considered older animals okay. that we have. Yeah. I know um, one of the questions that one of our listeners had was, what are the differences between stingrays and manta rays? So manta rays are those big, big pelagic, meaning midwater species mm-hmm. that you see people diving with. Um, they have the big oral lobes that they take in their food with, um, and they are... They're they are giant. Um, one day so I will. One day I will snorkel giant. with manta rays. One day. Oh, you have to. <laughs> I haven't done it either, but I know I've uh, seen some of our colleagues have gone and shared the most amazing pictures. Yeah. It doesn't even look real. Like how no, they are. Yeah. it looks like just a sea monster. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> but a cute monster. A cute monster. We used to have them painted on the front of the aquarium, even though we didn't have manta rays here. Yeah, it was <laughs> misleading, but, exactly. it, was, but it was still very pretty. Like before, in the front entrance. So yeah. before PV, we had a muralist from I think he was from Portugal. Um, um, it was part of like the Long Beach uh, like walls project. Mm, it was pretty. Um, it was really really cool. I'll, show you, I'll send you a picture. Yeah, it, it's I don't really remember nice. that. Yeah, this was um, pre PV. Probably twenty sixteen. Was... I think it was my first year that it went up. It was when see that's when I started diving. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Manta rays, giant, no barb. <laughs> Oral lobes. <laughs> Stingrays mm-hmm. are usually smaller. They're more benthic, so they're more on the bottom, mm-hmm. as opposed to manta rays, more pelagic in the water column. And stingrays have barbs. And barb. How? And barb. So stingrays typically, like I know we have the species pelagic rays. Yep. Pelagic. Oh, do yes. Yes. Species? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Sansa. We do have the pelagic. Okay. Yes. So I know we have pelagic rays, which are a stingray that is pelagic. Mm-hmm. So they sort of deviate from mm-hmm. the norm of what stingrays do. Mm-hmm. But do stingrays, are they shaped like that? And their mouth is on the bottom. Like, is that a feeding thing for them or a defense thing? Like, why are they at the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. So first, I forgot about Sansa, which is our pelagic ray. In ray pool, we do have one. And so Can she... Can you go over one more time what pelagic means? Yes. Pelagic is describing the water column. So you're not at the very surface of the water. You're not in the sand in the benthic zone. You are in the pelagic zone. You're kind of in the big, open, blue water. Mm. The pelagic zone. Yeah, so like zone. jellies are pelagic, Jellies are pelagic right? species. Dolphins okay. are pelagic species. Okay. Most whales are pelagic species. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so our pelagic ray is named Sansa, Um, and she does have a barb, and her mouth is on the bottom like traditional stingrays, but she lives in the pelagic zone. Hmm. Um, So for our bat rays and other benthic species, all of their food is usually going to be found in the sand. And so bat rays will use their little, like, kind of the tip of their nose, like a little shovel, and go Mm -hmm. through the sand and get different mussels, clams, things that live um, in the sand, and that's how they eat. And I don't know about pelagic... Pelagic like rays will eating? eat things that are in their pelagic zone. Like mid-water column. Mid-water mm-hmm. column. Yeah, Sansa does eat off the bottom occasionally. Um, I was going to ask, do you see like kind of a difference in behavior in the way she eats compared yeah. to the other rays? It's yeah. cute. It's very cute. So Sansa's the light of my life, um, oh. if you can't tell. Uh, so, <laughs> when, so we got her when she was very little. Um, she's about three or four years old right now. Um, and so before she was as the size she is now, she would kind of, we would target her. And she would eat separate from all the rays so that we ensured that she actually got food. Mm -hmm. Um, And she would come up to the surface with her little face and then we would give her Watong's food. Mm -hmm. And then she kind of flips on her back and swims backwards and she'll use her pectoral fins to kind of like bring food to her mouth. So think of like a little taco being folded. She would, yeah, she would do that. Um use her wings and kind of get food. And sometimes I would throw food onto her little mouth when she's on the surface. Aww. And then she'll kind of flip and come back and do the same thing. So we have sea pancakes, sea tacos. <sighs> sea taco. Um, what else do we call them? Sea raviolis. Sea raviolis. <gasps> That's a good one. Cute. Yeah. Like little baby ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It just reminds me of when you, like, throw a cheese ball in your friend's mouth. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I would do with her. Yes. Just throwing little pieces of clam in her yes. mouth. Aww. She's okay. like, ah, yes. So please. backtracking to, that's how pelagic rays eat. They mm-hmm. use their, they they use their wings. Mm-hmm. They use their wings to I capture food. have some video food. of that. We'll have to post along with them yeah. and release this. Hmm. It's real cute. Yeah, she's my favorite. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you tell? Just right out there. We're going to tell all the bat rays. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They're fine. Do our rays ever breed here? <laughs> So we have all female rays. Oh. Um, when female and male elasmobranchs, sharks and rays, are together, the males are extremely aggressive mm-hmm. with, the female, other, oh. with the females. Oh. 
Yes. Rude. Because, yes, very rude. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because they're trying to mate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they'll grab their wings. They'll, yeah, it's very, very oh. intense. We need a sorority only. Yes. What if so, males are alone together? Um, so all of the roundries that we have are actually all male. Mm-hmm. And they're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're fine. But it's when you have the same species of different uh, sex that nice. they get a little crazy. I remember one of the cow nose rays was pregnant. At some point, what does a pregnant ray look like? How can you tell? <laughs> They're just chubby. <laughs> they just have like they a, they look do. a little chub chub. Yeah, the, the cow nose rays—they just you can see a little, a little tummy on them. It's really sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. So we need to keep same sex of the same species together. Yes, otherwise, just to like, prevent yeah issues. any injuries or issues. That's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. Are they? Do you consider them to be like a pretty intelligent species? Do you do any training with them? Um, I do. Like we mentioned before, I we with Sansa, we would do the target training. So she would come up and eat. Mm-hmm. So they, you can target train them. You can station train them. Um, we had a couple of bat rays in Blue Cavern, a couple, maybe I think last year, and they were able to come to their little target with, and the diver was able to feed them. Um, cool. Yeah, they they're intelligent to that point, but not. I mean, not like a GPO or something. Yeah, they're smart for what they need. <laughs> they're smart for what they need. They yeah. get food. Around. They yeah. splash around, and they're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> what a life. What a life. I wish that was me. <laughs> the last question I wanted to ask about sort of our rays in general. Do you find that they each individually have their own personality, and like, what sort of enrichment do you provide to sort of keep them mentally stimulated? Um, so whenever I am in the exhibit, either with waders that are not flooding or with a wetsuit <laughs> that I'm not falling in. Um, sometimes I'll put food on the bottom and then put kind of like a weighted net over. It looks like a big square net Mm -hmm. and they'll kind of have to dig through and kind of, it's, it's whatever. It's a puzzle feeder. Yeah. It's exactly like a puzzle feeder, like a Kong ball. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever you can do to stimulate their natural way of eating Mm -hmm. is a great type of enrichment. So they're using those little plate teeth and their shovel little noses to get the food out from under that net. Um, and they really like it. Uh, but in terms of personality, I sometimes relate their personality with their name slash what their tail looks like. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so tiny just said tiny, tiny, tiny little, <laughs> and she's yeah, she's not kind of one of the more I don't know, uh, not aggressive because when when I feed them, they get very crazy and mm-hmm. they're not being mean or to each other or anything. Just but they're kind of food. excited, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Tiny's kind of the one that will stay back a little. The biggest one is or stubby, yeah. The biggest one is stubby, and she'll kind of be more excited but other than that they're kind of all the same so i know those are all female but what is the sexual dimorphism with rays um so with rays just like with sharks the females on her underside she's just gonna have a vent and then the male has two claspers oh okay yeah which look like yeah kind of elongated fins yeah exactly oh oh, yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um and the small round rays the males you can see their claspers um even when they're right side up where is it relative to their barb their claspers the so it's basically the same location but on the other side under underside of them okay yeah kind of at the base of the tail ish but the claspers will come out towards their tail okay mm-hmm. and I'm the laughing. vent is kind of right before their tail on their main body so rays are really <clears throat> just kind of like a shark kind of squished. pancaked yeah 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 squished it all yeah. the like fins they just like like, into, like <laughs> everything blob. melts yeah. into one pancake so cool yeah. i can't remember if you already said this but do they have teeth yeah, so Ooh, they have, question. yeah, since they're um, eating hard shell items mm-hmm. mostly that are in the sand, they have kind of, their teeth are flat, kind of like two plates, like two blind, uh, grinding plates that mm-hmm. are against each other, and they'll kind of grind them together and to crush up the shells, and then they'll eat the meat and spit out the shells. Huh. Yeah, so it's not like traditional shark teeth, like yeah. the pointy, scary things. Yeah. <laughs> so they're messy eaters though, huh? Very messy. Okay. <laughs> yes. If you go up to Ray Pool and you see the shells in there, that's because I haven't taken them out. <laughs> but yeah. She's working she's on, on it. it. But yeah. I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> Leave her alone. Yeah. <laughs> but I I know that, like, similar to sharks that do sort of, like, have teeth that replace their teeth. Like, I've found the Ray, like, dermal or dental plates or whatever they're called. Like, mm-hmm. I found those in the sand before. Mm-hmm. How, like, frequently are they, like, dropping those? I don't think it's very frequent. Mm-hmm. But I know that they will replace them continuously okay as they yeah as they lose them as often as sharks do necessarily i don't i don't believe so i wish that if my teeth fell out they just come back imagine (laughs) you don't have to get like a crown or anything yeah you just just get a free tooth yeah (laughs) they don't they're not gonna come back no madeline i have bad news (laughs) those are your last ones that's That's it um well i'm assuming you know with a, a it's probably a lot more work to grow a plate than it is a tooth continuously so it probably is a little less often Mm -hmm. that makes sense Mm -hmm. speak for yourself 
You, How many you grow plates plates? do you have? <laughs> you grow plates over there? I have a lot of plates. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, well, that's sort of what I wanted to ask you, but I wanted to know what your favorite story has been personally working with the Rays. What is your favorite thing about working with them, or what is your best Ray story? My best Ray story. Um, I love working at the Rays because... Whenever they're one of the first exhibits I go to in the morning, mm-hmm. and they're just always so excited, and always, even if they're splashing and getting me wet or whatever, <laughs> they're still just, I don't know, they're very routine and they kind of do the same thing every day, mm-hmm. which is comforting to me. Yeah. It sounds weird, but, um, and then whenever I go up and feed them, and as soon as I throw food in, they're all calm and they're all like <laughs> doing, they're just so happy to be eating. And yeah. like, okay, same. But <laughs> um, I just love how. I mean, we talked about how they don't really have, like, specific personalities, mm-hmm. but I do like how they're all kind of just little little cows, mm-hmm. and they just kind of do their own thing, and and they're really cute, so. They have a good demeanor. Favorite. Yeah. Yeah, they have a good demeanor, they're exactly. They're really sweet. Yeah. Um, Madeline will go over some of the questions we had from our listeners and social media, and we have some really great questions. We have some <laughs> great questions, especially this first one, which is, how silly are they? <laughs> Um, scale of one to ten scale of one to ten forty no um i would say they're kind of silly i mean who splashes against the wall for no reason yeah like silly you see the underside of them they just got those little smiley faces Mm -hmm. it does look like silly i mean they don't call them like ravioli or pancake you know for (laughs) nothing yeah that's amazing um how do they sleep um they will usually if i mean Sometimes they do it in rape pool, but mm-hmm. out in the wild, too, they will kind of bury themselves under the sand with their wings mm-hmm. to hide themselves. Um, and they just kind of chill on the bottom. Yeah. And in the Sounds afternoon. Like me. Yes. In the, <laughs> in the afternoon up at here at the aquarium, they will just be all kind of cuddled together, all kind of touching wings sometimes. And they just hang out there. Um, separately from the conversation or the questions from social media, rays are a social media favorite. Like more than sharks, shocking. Oh. Like I think if it was order, <laughs> stars of the went, show. In order of like kind of our most like what gets the most engagement on social media, it's otters, of course, mm-hmm. um, pinnipeds, and then rays. Like above octopuses, <gasps> rays perform Take that well. Brooke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're leaving that in. <laughs> we'll see if Brooke listens to the podcast. But when I wanted this to get your up. perspective on like why you think that is. I mean, they're cool obviously but but why do you think they're so up there why do you think they're so engaging i think rays are just like we talked about their their shape is just so silly Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times they're either in cartoons i think they're just very a very easy animal for kids to identify and to kind of know since childhood Mm -hmm. so i mean that one they're so cool yeah that's awesome yeah um do you have a favorite ray species maybe like it doesn't have to be one that you've been working with because it sounds like Sansa has Sansa, your heart. Yeah, exactly. Sansa has my heart. She's a favorite uh, individual, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I would say I love in the Shark Lagoon Touchables, I love the blue spot rays. They They're are beautiful. So, they don't even look real. Yeah. No. Like they look like someone it's painted them with blue. such a bright blue. Yeah. yeah. Which we did not. We did not paint. Yeah. No, paint n- no painting was done. <laughs> this I is a natural. Erin, <laughs> stop it. I've been painting them blue. <laughs> They're just cow nose rays. <laughs> <laughs> like, Magic <laughs> exclusive species at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, they just look, I don't know, they look like, yeah, like someone <laughs> painted them or They're drew beautiful. them. Thank yeah. you. Great job. I did Aaron. a good job. <laughs> a great job. They all look so cute. They're really, really cool. Are they more venomous? Like, why are they blue? Is it a so warning bright. coloration? It, yeah. It, I mean, it might it might be a warning coloration. Um, it's, I don't know in that habitat where those rays live. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that wouldn't surprise me if that's why they were so like kind of unnaturally blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like almost pretty. like fluorescent blue. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you look at them, it's shiny. Um, do you have a ray that you would like to work with in the future, a ray species? Um, or you have one already here, or a dream one that you would like brought in? Doesn't have to be a Pacific Ocean animal either. Sweet babies. Yeah, <laughs> I do love <laughs> whenever <laughs> I dive over sh- my head. <laughs> whenever I dive in Shark Lagoon, I do love diving with the giant reticulated ray that we have. She's mm. such. She's so big. She's the <laughs> largest she doesn't animal look... at the aquarium yes. in size, yes. not in weight. And she doesn't look... That belongs to Parker. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Parker is, I don't know, 800 pounds or something. At his, his max, day. leave him alone. Oh, <laughs> that's still so big. And he's heavy. <laughs> he's 850, okay? Oh, wow. But the reticul... I have such a hard time saying this. Reticulated. Reticulated Retic. Ray. Retic. Retic Ray. Retic Ray. Yeah. yeah. She's about like 400 pounds. Oh, I wow. Mm-hmm. That's about mm-hmm. 11 feet long. Biggest yeah. pancake I ever yeah, seen. She's 11 feet long? Yeah. That's two Sarahs. I know. 
Can you? Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> We just measure That's everything by how many you Sarah's there. <laughs> Every ray gets measured in Sarah's now. That's too, what a wow. dream. That's a long ray. So yeah. how long is her body? Because her body is not 11 feet. No, that's like with across. her tail. Her tail is very long, so mm. I don't know how long her, bo- her, long her body is, but... I think it's majority tail. It's but majority her, tail. Her body is still... <laughs> She's 10 feet big. of tail and one <laughs> foot of body. <laughs> Well, like, wow, that's, that's kind of what the eagle rays yeah, I was look say, like. That's like eagle rays. Yeah, yeah, eagle rays. I mean, they're still big, but the, the tail is long. Yeah, I remember when, the, well, when we got them, when they were, do you remember when their eagle rays were little? Yeah, they were so we, I was a volunteer diver, and we would feed them with a little, because they're trained to like the purple cone shape. Mm-hmm. That's what's on their stretcher. So we would carry down a purple traffic cone with clams mm-hmm. in it, and they would come up to it, and they were, I don't know, like four feet? feet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah little. tiny. And now they're huge they're but massive. huge yeah do you know how big the eagle rays get like in general mm-hmm. i don't uh how many sarahs I don't, <laughs> 60 sarah <laughs> um i think wow they just i think they just weighed the female and she was or excuse me the male and he was around one between 150 and 200 they're so cool yeah. i think he was 150 those are some big animals. Love so their noses. Yeah. Yeah. I know. They look like little, so little, so little pizza slices. slice. I know. They're so cute. Yeah. They kind of so look cool. like they have like a very, I don't know, like if their side profile is very distinctive. It looks you know, kind like of like <laughs> humanish because it's <laughs> yeah. like pointy. It is. It's really yeah. cute. Are they, anyway, are the eagle rays named that because of the shape of their like face? Yes, probably. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, very eagle-shaped um, face. <laughs> fun fact, the eagle ray in Trap Reef is named Elvis. Oh, yes. I did not know mm-hmm. that. Do you think that there's a ray fact that people would be the most surprised to hear? I have not well, not seen, but some rays can actually jump out of the water. Mm. And, mm-hmm. Um, Obviously not here. But yeah, some rays can actually jump out of the water um, and back in. Do they get like a Just running like start? A flapping start? <laughs> Probably. Do, they, do you think that they belly flop? How bad would that hurt oh, if they just horrible. like horrible? <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming if belly. they're coming <laughs> up, they would kind of maybe go nose down. But maybe I, they learn over time not to not just to just pancake. <laughs> It'd be such a jarring sound to hear out in the ocean, just like a smack <laughs> sound. Maybe this that's why they're shaped that way. <gasps> yeah, to do that. Yeah, they were sharks, and they too just many got belly bigger flops. And yeah. <laughs> They flatten themselves. Flatter and flatter. <laughs> Maybe they want the belly flop harder. So funny. Do they communicate with each other in any way? Is there any sort of like social structure with? Yeah, some rays will actually be solitary or mm-hmm. a couple, and then some live in big, big, big aggregations with mm-hmm. each other. Um, like I know I've seen videos of like drone footage of like mm-hmm. thousands of rays congregated together. Um, what are they up to? Uh, flapping? <laughs> is it like is confidential? It, is it a breeding it, thing? Yeah, typically? I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If it's that that many, yeah, I'm assuming. It's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a lot of rays, <laughs> a billion rays. They are cool to see those overhead shots, though, mm-hmm. and you can just see so many of them in mm-hmm. the same place. Cool. Yeah, it's so neat. Hmm. But do they communicate with each other in any way have you, that you've noticed, maybe? Or um, not that I've noticed mm-hmm. with my girls, but mm-hmm. I'm assuming just with their spatial awareness, and they've been with mm-hmm. each other for so long, and so I'm. They're like a little family. So cool. Yeah. If you had one thing that you wanted our listeners to take away from this, including the Stingray Shuffle. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Be? Can't forget Stingray Please Shuffle. Please do that. I would say that there's a lot of things about rays that maybe aren't super obvious or that people don't know, like difference between manta ray and stingray, which we talked about. Did we talk about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or, <laughs> you or, that. I thought we just did it before. <laughs> um and there's so many different species of rays out there. It's not just the bat rays that live in the sand or the round rays that live in the sand. Um, so I would encourage people to go out and research or if you're curious about something, um, find out as much as you can about it. I mean, I work with these bat rays every single day and I still, for this, had wanted to look up different facts and different things about them because there's still stuff that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I would just encourage people to keep researching what they're yeah. curious about, especially about rays because they're so cool. Keep your curiosity Keep your burning. curiosity up. <laughs> Send the rays of curiosity to, <laughs> to Sarah yourself. No, <laughs> to I don't Sarah want Navarre's. She's got enough. enough. She's got enough. Yeah, I guess she has enough rays. Send them that. to us. We'll ask Sarah. <laughs> I think we might have rays in every gallery right now. Let's see. Maybe not in Northern specifically. Let me think. Mm. Mm. In that Northern proper area, no. Mm-hmm. Northern proper. Oh, do we? Wait, we had little. There was a little in um, Sandy Bottom, right? 
That's the name of an exhibit. It's called Sandy Bottom. Why are you laughing at it? Because it's called Sandy Bottom. (laughs) Anyways. No, I don't think there's any up there. Okay. So we have rays in just about every gallery here Mm -hmm. at the aquarium. So Sarah is talking specifically about the rays she works with. But I know we have eagle rays in tropical. We have several species in tropical too. Mm -hmm. So if you come visit the aquarium soon, you'll be able to see stingrays. Pretty much everywhere. (laughs) Come see the flappies. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. I learned so much about rays, and I'm excited for our audience to do the same. Of course. Thank you so much. Aquarium of the Pacific is brought to you by Aquarium of the Pacific, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. In 2023, the aquarium celebrates 25 years of connecting millions of people worldwide to the beauty and wonder of our ocean planet. Head to aquariumofpacific.org to learn more about our 25th anniversary celebration. Keep up with the aquarium on social media at Aquarium Pacific on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. This podcast is produced by Aaron Lundy, Madeline Walden, and Scott Shaw. Our music is by Andrew Reitzma, and our podcast art is by Brandy Kenny. Special thanks to Cecile Fisher, Anitza Valles, and our audiovisual and education departments, and to all of our amazing podcast guests for taking time out of their day to talk about the important work that they do. Podcific wouldn't be possible without the support of the aquarium's donors, members, guests, and supporters. Thanks for listening. <laughs>